Right, Brad Bevan's on the front. He's closest to us there on screen. You see him wearing a black armband today. Mark Fuel will, will probably explain why that uh, that Brad's actually got that armband on. Yeah, Brad was uh, did some work with the uh, Leukemia Foundation up in Queensland, and uh, one of the little girls that uh, that uh, he worked with was a girl called Renee, and who was a huge fan of Brad. And uh, in fact, Brad gave her a, a, a race singlet from the St George Formula One, which she used to keep under a pillow. But unfortunately, she did uh, lose her battle with leukemia this week, and so Brad is dedicating her race to young Renee today. So those type of things don't really uh, get noticed uh, in uh, in races, Bill. Most people just focus on the racing. But uh, Brad is a is a uh, is a gentleman and a, a real nice guy, and he he does spend time promoting our sport to other people. Francis right now, he's also swimming extremely well. He certainly is going stroke for stroke with Chris Hill leading the pack. Tell you what, there's some rough stuff going around those cans, but they're, uh, cu they've come around, they're heading towards the shore now. This is where they'll be starting to pick up a bit of swell, and I can see Courtney Atkinson working the swell already. He's coming up, moving right into that um, lead with Chris Hill and Brad Bevan just by picking up some swells. Miles Stewart is up there too, swimming fantastically. Andrew Johns is holding on, and so is uh, Craig Watson, the New Zealander. He's up there, Jan Rahula. But back to the lead, there's three equal. Brad Bevan, Courtney Atkinson and Chris Hill. Miles Stewart moving up into that pack as well. It's amazing the difference this swell is making. They're really trying to work it and get a bit of a lift to go back into the shore. It's quite, uh, quite windy out here too, let me tell you guys. I think I'm just about as wet as these swimmers are. Now Francis, it looks like there's still eight there. Is Peter Robertson just at the back of that pack? Can you uh, can you tell from your position? He is, he certainly is. He's right at the back of that pack with Jan Rahula. It's going to be so important for him to hold on to this. Look, as you said earlier, the second swim in the Enduro event is very important. They'll all come out, get in the uh, pack on the bike we expect and it's going to come down to the best runner. So Peter Robinson, if he can hold on to this swim pack, he'll be in a great position. Well, we had a submarine's eye view just a moment ago of Brad Bevan's style. Uh, remarkable to see Chris Hill, particularly on the second swim, Drags, doing this well. I mean, and Robbo too, just to hang on to the back of this pack. I mean, this is where the younger guys have improved their performance and that's why they're able to match it tactically and physically with the Bevans and the Stewarts. Well Chris Hill has been swimming absolutely brilliantly in all the World Cup races this year. I, I was uh, amazed at how well he was swimming and Mark Bill's seen plenty of them too. He's been right up at the forefront just not far behind Craig Walton and the boys in, uh, in World Cup races. Yeah, he, he certainly had a great season. He was uh, third up at Noosa. He had a couple of wins over in uh, Japan at uh, Mi Sunbelt Race and also uh, Kamaishi. And uh, he's really been in form. And the main thing is that he has been consistent. And that's the one thing that has lacked in his racing over the last few years. Well, the pack looks like they've stayed together. And that's going to be mean exciting racing for us, Bill. Look oh, at no this. Question. Just Most... standing up now. Some waiting. Bit of porpoising. The transition will be all important, but it's Atkinson, it's Bevan, and it's Hill, the lead three. Well, and Chris Hill too, one of the smallest athletes in the field. Pretty happy, I guess, that there's not a lot of waiting in this swim leg. He's powering out, though. Bevan and Atkinson. Atkinson's on the far left. Bevan's over on the right there, and Atkinson with a better line towards the chute. He'll actually be the first one through, but it doesn't make a lot of difference. They're all just staying in that bunch, because that's where they'll be on the bike leg that's coming up. Just trotting up the beach now, Atkinson from Bevan. Johns is there. Hill's Hill there with Stewart. Stewart. Yarn Rahula, great to see him up. And Adam. And Peter Robertson right behind Yarn Rahula. And look at Robertson. Oh, Robertson. You can tell that style <laughs> anyway. Look at look him, at him go. go. On the left of your screen, yeah, it's not hard to pick him out. He just, he's unbelievable. I've never known anyone in a race to, to surge so dramatically That's as incredible. Robertson. incredible. Look at Peter Robertson going to the front here after that swim. <laughs> He's right on Brad Bevan's hammer now. This is going to be a very, very exciting race. It's Bevan who gets the helmet on first. Out of transition, important to make no mistakes. It looks like Robertson out first. Now it's Bevan followed by Robbo. And that's Atkinson Atkinson there has had well. a good one. He's just, in fact, pulled in front of Brad Bevan. Milo is just up there. That's Miles Stewart, of course. Mark Fuel, uh, quite remarkable how these guys have picked up their skills. And what do you think about Robertson? I mean, if anyone's ever done a, an endurance event of any kind, to be at this level, to be at this stage of the event and be able to put in a sprint like that, it's not easy. 
Well, he's a shot to win today, I can tell you that. And it just goes to show how important the swim has become. He's been swimming with Dick Kane in Sydney, who's a, a known endurance swimmer. He's produced some great swimmers as well as some good uh, triathletes in their swim leagues. He worked with Michaela Jones a few years ago and improved her swim out of sight. It looks like he's done it again with Peter Robertson. But what was also interesting is that Craig, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Watson, came in and uh, he was in about fourth place and this is where experience shows after that last bike leg he left his bike in a big gear and so as he went out there he lost valuable time because he couldn't get the leg speed and he dropped off the back of the pack. Well it looks like here we've got uh, eight, the eight guys still together out on course and we didn't uh, really mention it and Mark Phil may have seen it in transition, Ben Sanson put in an unbelievable swing to be just off the back of those eight guys. Well he did exactly the same thing last year, he was way back going into the swim and then he pulled back and he ended up being ahead of Greg Welsh in uh, I think it was fifth place going out on the bike. The guy is an amazing swimmer but also Courtney Atkinson, he's a danger here, he uh, has been racing very well in Queensland. He recently finished second in a, an aquathon up there, which is a swim run event, and he outran Brad Bevan. Uh, Miles Stewart last week in a similar race outran him. So anything could happen here, but isn't it great to see the young guys and the newcomers to the series mixing it up with the experience? Yes, uh, Atkinson actually beat Greg Bennett and Matt Reed in the recent Twin Towns triathlon. So handy field there, tuning up, of course, for this event. You mentioned Ben Sanson, Mark Fuel. He finished up 14th last year after having to catch up on the swim leg and then try and tag on on the bike so we'll see how Ben's run has improved in 1999 if he can uh, sustain that effort well it's Jan Rahula who's gone off the front again as they come past uh, transition and make the loop round the other seven guys are together Rahula off the front I want to put Mark Fuel on the spot who's going to win today oh, look, I, I'm, I'm going to say Robbo um, I know it's a big call. Miles, though, I've got to say, look, Miles is doing his usual. Very smart racing. He's sitting behind Peter Robertson. He said, why do any work? This race is won on the last run. I think Jan Rahula here is uh, showing his strength. I don't know whether it's a good tactic at this stage of the race. But Miles Stewart, I think you'll find, will just sit in the top three. He's happy to be behind Peter Robertson at the moment because he knows that if Robbo stays out in front, and Robbo can be very excitable, we've seen him do it before, then he's going to burn his legs for that final run, and if Miles is anywhere near them towards the end, in fact, I would love to see a sprint finish between those two guys because nobody has ever beaten Miles before. Maybe Robbo can be the first one. Well, Jan... Uh Jan obviously trying to give himself a better position on the run because he knows he can't sprint with those guys. Here's your chance to take on a sprint at the Bulletin F1 Tri Challenge, Sunday, March 21. Early start, check that out. Pier 1 in Sydney, there's the number to ring. It's a triple super sprint, that's a 300 swim, 7k bike, 3k run. Team event, you can do it in a relay. Very, very easy to do, and your chance to win a Fuji Xerox colour printer valued at more than $8,000. Details and entry forms available. With that phone call, and, of course, in issues of Bulletin magazine. A lot of things could happen in this race, but, gee, given the fact that there's a little bit of a question mark over Brad Bevan, this has got Miles Stewart written all over at this race, I think. Uh, but if Brad is as, as fit as he normally is going into this series, then you can't rule him out either. Well, don't write Andrew Johns off either, I can tell you that. He's well, let's there. just go through the top and eight and, and that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'd say Robertson, Johns or Stewart, one of the three. Uh, would I'd like to see Peter Robertson win because I I'd just like to see uh, a new face actually take out a round in the series. We yes. haven't seen too many over the years. Robbo's won a couple of the couple of races within a race, but he, he has hasn't actually uh, won, a, won a series race, but we're going to see some very exciting racing. They won't let Jan Rahula get too far away. We'll take a break, come back with more from St George Formula One. The battle is on. This is it, the second last leg. That's your race leader on the left, Jan Rahula of Czechoslovakia, or the Czech Republic, I should say. And just behind him, a pack of seven riders. And each of that top eight has a chance to win this event going into the run leg. You won't see a challenge coming from beyond those. But Jan Rahula hoping to give himself some sort of a lead on some of the best triathlon runners in the world. Yes, uh, he, he really does need a lead. He knows it, and that's why he's off the front and working real hard. He's going for the win. He's not prepared to sit in and just 
uh, see where he can finish in the run. He's out there trying to take it to the guys and get enough lead that he can hang on in the run. It's only a three kilometre run to finish this race, so it's not a long way, about 10 minutes. A little less for the real top runners in the field. And Mark Phil, there is a chase pack, but they're a fair way behind. Yeah, that's right. We, there's a, a group. Tim Don is actually moving his way through the field, and uh, he is back there with uh, low to later and another. Marcus Keller's the one who's been doing it tough here all day. Uh, quite often they come into the series and they do get a real shock, and he's found it tough today. But it's that second group, there, or rather one behind Yarn Rahula, that's really moving. Tim Don turned 21 on Thursday, the World Junior Champion from Great Britain. A learning experience for him. And he'll be happier, I expect, in the second round, which will be just a swim bike run over the classic distance. You see there the leading group, that is with the exception of Jan Rahula, who's there a little bit away from them. And for how long can he...